Okay, folks, uh, good morning. My name is Mariano Gomez. I'm a Microsoft MVC, MVP and CTO at um, McCormick Incorporated. We are an ISV in the Microsoft Dynamics community. Um, the topic for today is uh, Power Platform ALM for Dummies. And by no means anybody here is a dummy. It's just uh, what are the topics that we're going to cover and make this simple for you to understand. So the next um, and my next slide here, uh, here's my brief introduction. I'm a, as I said, a Microsoft um, MVP running now since uh, 2008. I've been through many, uh, I would say, continents and countries uh, speaking about the beauty and the benefits of the Power Platform and the Dynamics Platform in general. Uh, this session is geared towards um, providing you basically with direction and uh, con on the concepts that um, drive the ALM experience with uh, Power Platform and how to implement a successful um, ALM strategy. Um, I'll also be talking about some tools and considerations so we can, uh, we can take that into account. So what I want to actually start with is a general understanding of where these things fit within the universe of um, Azure and Azure services. So as you probably know, Power Platform is actually a, an, a set of Azure services and those Azure services um, or, or those services run inside your tenant. And if you keep in mind uh, what that relates to, it's pretty much your entity, your virtual entity, your virtual corporation on the Azure platform. Inside uh, those uh, Power Platform services, you define environments. And those environments basically run uh, on your uh, CDS or includes your CDS uh, components. Uh, or I would say Dataverse. I know we don't refer to them as CDS anymore, so that's a um, that's a a slip of the tongue if you wanna if you wanna call it somehow. So your database your database uh, databases reside inside of your environments. In addition to that, um, what we the premise of the ALM experience is based on solutions. So as a citizen developer, as a pro developer, you must get used to the concept of solutions within those environments. And in order to deploy a solution, you must have in, in mind that um, you will need a, a CDS database or a database database by default. So uh, those solutions can host things like your Power Apps applications, certainly your Power Virtual Agent um, uh, chatbot experiences, your Power Automate experiences, and certainly Power BI experiences among all a host of other um, elements that you can that you can store and host in inside a solution and we'll get to that in a second well i'm not one uh, that is known for driving slides so let's get to the meat and potatoes of what we're trying to accomplish today and i'm going to stop the slideshow here so the first thing i want to call your attention to is um definitely uh, your environments. So in traditional Power Apps development or in traditional uh, Power Automate development, we used to actually working within one environment. That concept actually changes slightly when it comes to ALM. And what you want to have is a set of environments rather that allow you to pro do development, uh, exercise QA, and certainly release to production. In, in a way of uh, being able to separate the activity. So if you look at traditional power ops development, for example, um, typically those are done inside of one environment with the app being controlled and the version being controlled within that same environment. In ALM and for the pro dev experience, that's not quite uh, best practice. So you wanna have uh, different environments that, um, that host those uh, application components or those workflows that you develop or even the chatbots that you create. Okay, so if I look at this particular environment, 
Um, there's another concept that I want to bring to mind here quickly, and is the aspect of security. So in ALM, we got to be able to connect our uh, DevOps experience with our Power Platform. And that is done in one of two ways. You can do it through um, an application user. If you go under settings here and you select um, users and permissions and you choose um, application users, this is where you would, in essence, uh, add an application user that is registered in under your Azure application registrations. So basically that application registration is what um, is what bridges your uh, power uh, or your environment, your power platform environment with your DevOps uh, tool, whether, whether that's GitHub or whether that's um, uh, Azure DevOps itself. And today I'm gonna be doing some demos on Azure DevOps, but the um, the idea applies very similarly similarly to your GitHub experience. Okay, so once I've actually created my application registration, and you can do it pretty simply here by adding a new app user, you can actually click on Add App, and that basically allows me to select among any of the app registrations that I have available, uh, which one I would like to assign um, <clears throat> to my environment itself. Now. This actually has changed from previous experiences because before you had to do this in, in kind of like a Dynamics 365 um, security environment. And it was kind of a little bit disjoint from this very slick experience that is being provided as of late. Okay, within your environment, remember that I said you manage um, solutions. So if you basically go over here um, to this particular uh, environment, I actually have my dev environment here. But if I scroll down, you also see my production and my queue environments, which I've created prior to this, um, to this session. Now, solutions are exactly where you're going to host most of your, most of your um, uh, I would say, most of your uh, Power Platform objects. So if I click here on new solution, the first thing you must uh, do is actually set up a display name. But more importantly, you want to define a pub publisher. For those of you who are actually ISVs or professional developers, this becomes very important because as a publisher defines all the topographic information that is necessary to populate a um, and get your solution known, especially and more so if you're going to actually publish this on app source. So yes, um, for those of you who are ISVs inclusively, uh, as I mentioned before, my company is an ISV. When we define our solutions, we make sure we define our own publisher. And by default, you have some existing publishers, but I have actually created for this particular demonstration, this company XYZ publisher, okay? Um, very important to understand a solution cannot be actually created and uh, hosted without a database database. So that's very key to keep in mind. So I have actually defined this expense solution here. And part of what I did in this expense solution uh, for, and this by the way is for an expense management application that I've created is currently I host this expense application within this solution. But if I go to add existing, you can see now that you can add dashboards, dialogues, tables, environment variables, cloud flows, desktop flows, and all sort of other type of uh, objects, including AI models that are gonna make up your solution. And this is why uh, this model of solution is very important to, to your experience, because this is the basis, is the foundation of your um, DevOps process. Um, so, how does this reflect and how do these things really interact with, um, with uh, your ALM environment? So let's go over here uh, to um, my Azure DevOps environment where I already have a um, project called Powerful DevConf 21 already created. But if you're already familiar with, uh, with this, 
you can always define a project from your project uh, desktop. All you have to do is create a new project and make sure that that project um, is uh, guaranteed uh, contribution rights from all your developers and all the developers in the environment. So key here is um, once you're in the DevOps uh, space, you will want to look at uh, the marketplace. It's in the marketplace, what you will want to do is you will want to ins install the Power Platform uh, toolbox, okay? So the Power Platform build tools are actually uh, installed or you can actually get it for free from the marketplace to install in your environment. Well, this is important because uh, the Power Platform build tools actually contain all the different deployment tasks, build and deployment tasks that you're gonna need uh, to maintain proper ALM, okay? So that's that's uh, something that you wanna keep in mind. You wanna make sure that you install the Power Platform build tools. And um, in those build tools particularly, you're gonna have, uh, once you create your project, let me go back to um, my Visual Studio environment, DevOps environment, you're gonna have uh, these different components now being hosted inside of your Azure DevOps environment. So that's important. The, for those of you who are professional developers, uh, you know that uh, code cannot be hosted without a repository. So you will wanna add a repository to your project that's gonna basically host all your DevOps components or you actually your project components. Now that project, remember, Part of it comes from, or a lot of it comes from your solution within the, the Azure, or within the Power Platform environment itself. Now, the first thing is that you need to ask yourself then is, how do I actually get my uh, source code, my Power Apps or my uh, Power Automate source code into my uh, Power, into my Azure repository? And that is done through pipelines, okay? So the first pipeline that I have here is the pipeline that actually allows me to pull data from my repository. So if you go here and click on edit, um, this will actually bring up the uh, pipeline that I already built. It's a YAML uh, pipeline. But for those of you who are not necessarily familiar with YAML and you actually like the traditional way, you can still uh, build a pipeline using the classic editor. So keep in mind that that's still available to you. But um, if you want to actually use the modern experience within uh, the DevOps uh, pipeline, uh, you can actually then uh, use a combination of YAML, or if you're not familiar necessarily with YAML development, you will then use and resort to the Power Platform uh, different tasks, uh, the Power Platform build tools task that we previously installed. So, whether you write YAML or whether you're comfortable with um, uh, whether you're comfortable with YAML or not, you must have the build tools installed. So as you can see here, there's different tasks that allow you to uh, check your solution, for example, um, analyze it for defects. You can actually create an environment if you need to. So I didn't have to necessarily define those environments uh, to begin with. I could have actually created them if I wanted to with a specific build tool. Uh, or build tool task um, from uh, my Azure DevOps environment. Now, inside, as you can see, this particular repository task or, or pipeline does a few things for me. It does allow me to, first and foremost, um, deploy my power, power Platform tool installer, which is nothing more than a collection of um, PowerShell scripts that allow me to interact from my um, agent with my Azure, uh, with my Power Platform environment, okay? The next thing that I can do here then is export that solution. So once I've actually installed the tools, I wanna export the solution from, uh, from my uh, Power Platform environment down into my uh, DevOps environment uh, or into that agent that is running. Subsequently, what you wanna do then is, because that is delivered in, in the form of a zip file, you will then want to 
um, unpack that solution. And unpacking that solution then takes that zip file and then explodes it into the different individual files that, um, that are part of your overall solution. And subsequently, what I do then is I apply a task, a command line task that then moves that solution or those files into my repository. And I can make all these scripts available to you. Typically, you can find them on my on my YouTube channel, and we'll get to that at the end of this session. But um, this is actually available for you or from the GitHub repository, the Power Platform GitHub repository, for you to actually use and consume within your, your pipeline experience. All right. Um, so this basically takes care of the repo. So if I actually run this, this pipeline, I can then uh, execute the task within that pipeline. And that's going to allow me to then queue up my job. And if you look at this, it will then execute the different tasks that will allow me to uh, get the solution components from the Power Platform environment and move them into my repository. So that's the first thing that you must do. You must establish a relationship between uh, your environment and um, your Power Platform environment and being able to retrieve those um, solution files into your Azure DevOps repository, okay? So right now, uh, the tools are being installed and um, once that is completed, which is fairly quick here, it should be um, you know, a matter of uh, less than a minute perhaps to get all this uh, installed, then you will be able to see the next step within the repository once you have your repository established. So I'll let this run for a second. Um, I want to actually go back and refer to uh, Power Platform uh, or Power Apps and, and Power Apps applications for one second. And one thing here is with Power Apps applications, remember that you had a rudimentary version control system where you would have to promote one version if you wanted to, uh, to or an older version if you wanted to go back uh, to a previous version of your app. Um, that was just introduced recently with, um, with um, uh, the workflows, with Microsoft uh, Power Automate workflows. So you kind of have those capabilities too. But nonetheless, if you are a professional developer, that experience wasn't necessarily um, adapt to what you used to. And this basically takes that guessing uh, out of the game. Okay, so here we are with um, the modules being installed. Uh, that should take a couple more seconds. So we'll let that run uh, for a bit. Oh, uh, one thing that I'm asked uh, constantly about the um, build tools, they're actually available for free. Uh, from Microsoft. So you don't need to pay or register or do anything uh, to that effect. Just download them from the market and uh, make sure they are part of your um, of your tool set within uh, Azure DevOps. A couple of other things what this um, executes is if you go under project settings, this, this is something that I'm also asked uh, constantly is in order to establish a connection to your um, to your DevOps environment, there's a couple of options. You can actually um, go through the service connections. And as you can see here, I have a service connection that is a Power Platform service connection uh, to establish uh, that, that, um, that connection to my environment. So let's take a look quickly here at service connections. There's two types of connections that you can work with. If you are actually running um, a non-MFA environment, you probably want to use a generic connection. And in that generic connection, you will then establish a URL. And that URL is basically the URL to your environment. Where do you get the URL for the environment? So if you go back to Power Platform uh, Admin Center, and you then go to um, Environments itself, OK? Once you get, get the list of environments um, presented to you, you will be able to select uh, under the settings of that environment, the, um, let's take a look at here, uh, Power Platform DevConf. 
you'll basically be able to copy this URL. And that's the URL that allows you to link under that service connection. Uh, sorry, over here. Uh, under that service connection, you would paste that uh, in plain text, and that's basically the environment URL. Now, this is for non-MFA. So here, obviously, you will be establishing a user ID and a password to authenticate. And uh, then you fill out the service connection name and description. Now, that's for a generic service connection. If you are in an environment where you um, are running MFA, then particularly you want to use a um, power platform connection. So with this power platform connection, you have the same capabilities. So you have the server URL, the tenant ID. This will be your Azure tenant ID from your registration. OK, so for security reasons, I'm not going to display my tenant here, but under your Power Platform app registration, you will have access to your tenant ID. Now, um, going back to the uh, settings themselves, you will fill out that tenant ID. You will then enter the application ID and the client secrets. So it's important to define and capture those client secrets once you define them, because after that, you don't have access to it. You probably will have to end up creating a new one if you forget to copy what the application ID is. Same thing here. You would define a connection name, a description, and certainly uh, grant permission to all pipelines to be able to execute under those, um, under those uh, protocols. Now, let's go back to uh, pipelines here quick. OK, so I believe this pipeline just completed. So let's go on the repos here and then double check. So effectively, I have my repo now with the different um, ap application components that are part of this solution that I created. OK, and as you see, there's an MS app uh, here available to you. So part of the challenge with, um, with uh, the ALM experience is that there are all these tools, and you cannot uh, sometimes make sense of them. So the best thing to do is once you have your application uh, or your solution in your repo, you can clone this uh, solution. And what I will do here is clone it using uh, cloning, uh, clone it in VS Code. And uh, once I do that, I can then um, basically determine what directory I'm going to send this to. So for all intents and purposes, I'm going to clone it under the presentation folder that I have here under speaking engagements. And I'm going to actually locate the Powerful Devs uh, conference um, you know, folder. So that's where I'm going to clone it. And I'm going to select this as my repository location. And as you can see, this begins the cloning process. Now, once this is completed, I will show you a couple of things that are very interesting here. So we're going to add this or open it in a new um, new window for all intents and purposes. And now I have my repository clone here, and I'm going to close this out. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. You also have what is called the Power Platform command line interface or Power Platform CLI. Uh, that is actually downloadable as an extension. If you go to the list of extensions here, uh, sorry, wrong button. So here in extensions, I have uh, the tooling necessary to actually create um, my uh, power platform uh, or interact with the code that I actually just downloaded and cloned from my repository. Now, keep in mind that you cannot necessarily interact with just the MS app. There's actually no code in that MS app. So if I expand my solution here, I still have that MS app option um, that is present currently from, um, from, from the application that I just downloaded. So how do I get to the code? This is where the uh, Power Platform uh, command line interface um, uh, options come into play. So I'm going to actually set up a new terminal here. And under that new terminal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpack my MS app application. So I'm just going to choose um, this option here, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to paste it in here. So give me one second here. Let me grab this from over here. 
And let's just paste it here. There we go. So uh, if I actually use the pack command um, and this canvas option that was just added uh, here recently, I can then unpack the expense application that I that I have as a part of my expense solution project and uh, send it to its own folder. So let's do that. Uh, phone. Let me see. If you can. Wrong directory. So here at Expense Solution, I have my Canvas directory. So my Canvas apps directory. So I'm going to just uh, pass over to that one. OK, there we go. And now I'm going to paste my, um, my unpack command. So as you can see now, this is actually unpacking the application. And what I end up with is another folder called Expense Solution Source, which is where I decided to send it. And if you look under here now, now I have access to the actual YAML files that make up that source code. So if you look at, um, say, for example, the uh, my expense YAML file, if I actually look at that over here, I can see now that all my uh, code is embedded here. If I actually wanted to go ahead and add more code to this, I could do it from directly from Visual Studio Code as opposed to uh, doing it directly in the um, Power Apps uh, Studio, if I wanted to. Okay. Obviously, things like uh, like uh, your uh, workflows, your Power Automate workflows, you probably still need to do some of that modification um, in the in the Power Automate Studio. But as more and more these components are added to um, to the Power Platform. Uh, command line interface, you will be able to do more and more eventually with uh, with uh, with the studio itself. Now, I actually would like to see in the near future, obviously, uh, color coding and these kind of things uh, brought to brought to the uh, the um, the development experience in Visual Studio Code for uh, Power Apps applications and even for workflows. I'm sure that's something that uh, that's, does not escape the mind of, um, of the dev team. But if I were to go ahead and modify any of these commands, then I can effectively go ahead and, uh, and or, or change anything here. For example, from approved to um, completed, right? Maybe I was asked to make a change to that text. I can do it here comfortably and then uh, save and on and uh, repack my application. So let's see how you would do that. Effectively, I would just use the uh, pack canvas pack command, and I would just do cd that pack, and I would then uh, make sure that I can repack that application. And you guys already know the process. You would then take uh, these um, this new MS app and uh, check it back into your repository where you can then go ahead and do things like uh, uh, doing a build pipeline to your QA environment. So that's what I'm gonna actually talk about here now. So if you go back to pipelines, I have a um, pipeline in here that allows me to then um, run this uh, particular set of options. And then we can see what tasks are a part of this. Uh, this task will then, again, install the Power Platform tools, uh, which is, again, a set of uh, uh, PowerShell scripts that allow you to repack your solution or uh, allow you to repack your solution, import it back into the QA environment. And what we want to do is with each import, we want to also export that solution back to uh, the artifact directory and then publish those artifacts once we uh, we know that they are in in fact complete tested and making sure that everything is sound within our um, within our environment okay so uh, here we are we're just gonna do a quick run here and that will then go ahead and execute this job and that will then uh, move everything back to my QA environment over here. So if I go to um, 
powerful DevCom, and I select uh, my QA environment over here, I will see that solution uh, pretty soon added to all the list of solutions within this environment. Now, uh, I think that um, once we have that in place, we can then uh, run through the other pipeline, which is our release pipeline. And our release pipeline then defines the list of steps or actions that I'm going to take in order to um, basically deploy this into a production environment. So if you're familiar with, um, with uh, release pipelines in Azure DevOps, they do allow you uh, to set up tasks. And those tasks basically are tied to a, um, to an art a set of artifacts which we produce in the prior build. And all this will do then is run the installer and import that solution into your production environment and off you go. So in this, in a nutshell, I've actually brought all three components, including the Power Platform uh, build tools and the Power Platform command line interface in Visual Studio Code to provide a single experience, a single professional developer experience that allows you to do team development if you want to with a Power Platform. Uh, finally, what I want to do is I want to call your attention to uh, for those of you who are GitHub fans, uh, to the GitHub Actions available with the Microsoft Power Platform. So you can, you can also have that uh, complete experience if you are a GitHub um, user as well. And here you have the different actions that are available with uh, GitHub and making sure that um, you can effectively uh, manage through that experience uh, equally. So again, stay connected, keep learning, participate in the Fusion Development and Cloud Skills Challenge. Uh, we really, really would like to see you there. Uh, check out the Fusion Dev eBook. Um, it's uh, something that you want to have on the arsenal of tools. Follow me on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn, and definitely um, subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have more and more uh, information about um, the DevOps, ex DevOps experience with Azure DevOps. So uh, thank you very much, and um, I will see you soon.